Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Now, due to the fact that I have no turns to actually play today, I thought I'd do a summary. <laughs> I'm going mad. <laughs> I don't know what to do by myself, but I don't have a turn to play. But I thought I'd do a summary here. Uh, it brings people up to date. The reason why I've not been doing as many... Let me figure out which is the right one. No, it's not that one. Which bloody one is it? I got a second one here. Ah, there we go. That was bizarre. Yes, uh, the reason why I've not been doing as many summary videos is because I'm used to getting the turns by pretty quick. So I think people would prefer to see the new turns before uh, anything else. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to go over what we're doing here today. And what's going to be coming up in the next turn. We will be having a very large strike against Singapore over here, which is going to be great. And the fall of Palembang will come as well. Now, I am doing a sweep mission from Sinkawang. I'm from Kotobaru, so we'll have double zeros hitting Singapore. Uh, beyond that, though, the big deal, real big deal, is I am sending here uh, 138 Sallies. This is probably going to be um, the biggest bombing raid of the war, I can imagine, at least for us. I don't know if there'll be times when we send this many bombs against such targets, but we'll see. Uh, so these guys, okay, so experience is okay. Uh, fatigue's not so bad, morale's not so bad. I haven't really taken much in the way of losses. But that's still 138. The Japanese bombers aren't exactly amazing. But what we like is the feather we have. Four 250 kilogram bombs. Uh, having one big bomb's okay, but having like lots of little bombs is actually quite useful. So that's going to be quite interesting. They're going at about 17,000 feet. They are going to be escorted by, let's see. Uh, let us see. Right, let me do this. Right, there we go. And I join. Right. So we have the Yamada detachment over here. They're sweeping Singapore at 30,000 feet there. We have the Oscars over here. They're an escort on 50% cap as well. But essentially they're going to act as additional escorts if needed. Which is good. Oh, so there's potentially escorts to the G3s over here. The bear running the escorts. From over here at Kuantan, we have the Kai 27s here. They're running escort over Singapore here. Uh, a decent level of cap over here. We did see attacks previously. We also do have the Ki 41s. These guys are in a long range cap over Task Force 169. So it's not the largest escort uh, we've ever had. There is going to be escorts in here with the KF 43 one as Not exactly great. But what we are looking forward to here is having, obviously, the double sweep. So from the Yamada detachment at Kota. And uh, over here, let's see, the third KUS-1. I decided to have them actually go ahead and sweep at Singapore as well. Uh, so we'll have a squadron of 18, a detachment of 15 here as well, going to sw uh, sweep at Singapore. Now... I'm going very heavy here on the sweep because I want to make sure that if he does actually send fighters in here that we can shoot them down. Uh, we're going for a very heavy, heavy, heavy amount of bombers. And I'm hoping that will pay off. Now, we have had some nice luck actually. Not so much luck I suppose you could say, but we've had some good uh, success so far. So we've taken Mersing, that does really open things up for us. We are going to march over here. This is going to take two days due to this being major roads. It's then going to take another two days over here due to the major roads. So, the question comes down to, I could wait for the second division, which should, in theory, let me see, did I set that to full speed? I hope I did. Yes, okay, fantastic news. Yeah, so these guys are going to move four hexes per phase. They have seven hexes to go. So they will arrive during the daytime, which is not ideal, but they will arrive. Now, Previously, it took a day for the full division to be unloaded. I think they will still be unloaded in the turn to come. They're arriving quite late there. Uh, best case scenario is that they do unload quickly. Now, we do have the port, and I'm hoping that will allow us to unload quickly. We do have large ships over here. Ideally, they will unload very quick. But it's a lot of potential valuable targets. The good news is with them being aboard so many APs, at least it is somewhat uh, spread out there. But yeah, it, it's not something we'd want to lose. Uh, we do have a force over here. They're going to be escorted by heavy cruisers heading south to link up with them. So at least that will give us some additional cover there. So they're going to be meeting them about there. Uh, they will have uh, air cover coming from Kuantan. So things should go well. We did, we did well the first time. We were quite lucky the first time to not actually take any casualties. It could have been a disaster, but it went well. So let's see. Uh, they will arrive tomorrow. So they'll arrive on the 19th of December. 
I'm going to theorise that they'll be fully unloaded by the 20th of December. But what I should be able to do then is begin marching on the 19th of December with what has unloaded. Ideally, the rest of the division will have unloaded by that time before they do leave the Hex. Uh, but in theory, we might be able to have the second division here on the 20th of December. Wow, these guys, 20th of December. Actually, no, let's see. No, it's going to be 21st of December. Uh, these guys, 20th of December. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting this wrong. Um, okay. These guys will be here on the 20th of December. The division will arrive on the 19th and probably be fully unloaded by either the 20th or 21st. So, we're looking at either the 21st or the 22nd of December until that division arrives there. Uh, by that time that the second division arrives here, more than likely, we will be at Johabaru. What I may decide to do is await the second division's arrival at Johabaru. And the reason for that is, it's not that we can't take Johabaru, but it may be worthwhile to have him there just to really boost our odds and just to inflict as much pain on his forces as... just as, as much pain as possible, really. Which would be ideal. The, um... Yeah, the reason for that is the the more damage we can actually inflict in Johabaru, the better, really. And that's going to be very important. It also does prevent us from taking as much damage, because obviously we'll have two divisions bearing the brunt of the attack rather than just one. Uh, we should ha have less uh, fatigue and disruption than ideally. That would be ideal. We do have a third division coming down from Kota. I'm not so sure when they will arrive. I think... Right, that's that one. I do have additional reinforcements I just need to send out. I'm having them shipped to Singora for the time being. Well, move to Singora for the time being. Uh, but yes, this is the Imperial Guard Division. So, currently aboard here is 3,000 men. Now, still ashore, we have, obviously, the Imperial Guard Division. Let's find what it is. Yeah, the Imperial Guards Division. So, there's 1,806 infantry left to be loaded, so over 100 squads. But then there's a lot of the second line troops. So we loaded uh, 3,000 today, ideally, and that was with other things going off at the port here. It's only a size 1 port, which is not ideal. No naval support either. So it might take about uh, 2 to 3 days until they're fully loaded. I'm going to hope that they're loaded tomorrow, but it could be another day on top of that. So probably 3 days in total when uh, we take into account the first day of loading here. Now that would be ideal. We just, well, not ideal to have that as quickly as possible, but I, we need to have our forces south here as quickly as possible. I mean, what I've been considering here is whether three divisions will be enough. I can bring in engineers. Now, I imagine he's probably level one fortifications by now, perhaps. Uh, we haven't really been on top of hitting the airfields because we did have other targets. I'm hoping that um, the best he'll get is level one, level two, perhaps, but we'll see. He's had a... Uh, I don't know. I don't know how many days. I can't remember the last time there was damage here. He might have had... Mm, maybe a few days. I think he's probably got level 1 fortifications by now. If I can prevent that from becoming level 2, that'd be good. And it's not ideal. It does make it a little bit harder, but not tremendously so. I mean, it's urban light to Singapore, so it's only times 2 terrain. Just I. We just need as much as we can get, really. It would be uh, a better idea to wait for all three divisions to arrive at Johabaru before marching across, and uh, just probably moving what else what else we can, really. Like, uh, the engineer regiments would be ideal. Uh, the ones with the AV, that is. Yeah, like, the 55th engineer regiment is amazing. Like, that is a proper combat unit. Uh, which is actually moving north, which is not ideal. I wish I'd stop that. <laughs> I do have these guys over here. They are okay. But it's not really what I want to be sending in here. These are these are kind of uh, used to just build things up. They do have IGA engineers, but uh, uh, they're not really a combat unit. Like, you can see the 55th engineer is a proper combat unit. So, yeah. Uh, we'll take a look. We do have a lot of assets in the area, so uh, it's a shame that some things have got caught up, but that's not too bad. Uh, we do have a good few regiments over here. Uh, some of them will be moving out, obviously, to help aid the conquest and layer. But there will still be more remaining here, which will then move down. I should... Yep, I have the 144th Regiment over here, uh, which is currently moving to Mersing. Uh, what I've decided I may in fact do then is, depending on the actual uh, outcome of the battles over Palambang, there's surely to be air raids over Palambang. The issue is I can't do much about it. Um... 
So we are going to have to hope. We do have a level 4 port here, which is good. Level 4 airfield. So as soon as Palambang falls, then I can I can manage it. It's the issue of not having enough supply over here that Sun Quang to actually provide us uh, with the drop tanks to cover Palambang, which is worrying, but we'll see. He does have a large deal of bombers over here with Davia. Uh, it is 7 hexes out, so it is out of range for a few of them. But he'll probably have some there. It's going to be a very interesting time. Uh, but yes, I'm considering bringing the regiment down here to Oosthaven. And trying to secure Oosthaven. And then that would give us a really nice base there. Port 3, size 2 airfield. It gives a really nice base to work with just on the coast of Java. Uh, we will be moving towards Denpasa as well. We're already underway towards Denpasa. They're going to be covered by the BB Task Force, which is just over here. So they'll be covered by Mutsu and Hayuga. That should be good. So, they have a few days to go yet. I think it's another two days travel on top of this. They've got nine to go, so they're moving. So they'll move four. Yeah, so three days in total. I could move them full speed tomorrow and they would arrive, but a little bit slower is not too bad, as it does allow us to actually clear this area up. Uh, the good news is we do have our Kandari bombers over here. These guys are going to be flying out naval attack at 14 hexes, escorted by zeros over here. So as you can see, we do have two zero squadrons. So you can see that uh, 14 is just under the actual max range here that we set them, which is good. And that's a lot of targets in this sort of area over here. I don't imagine we're going to hit a lot, but what I would like to hit is like these light cruisers over here. If I could hit those guys, I'd be very happy. Uh, there's probably other targets in the area as well that we're not aware of, but this is it. It's going to help us to try and clear the area out, which is good news. Uh, I do have the heavy cruisers up here, which I've named Spider 1, 2, and 3. And these guys are heading out this way. So yes, they're heading out this way. It looks like I forgot to set one of his subs uh, back to proper patrol pan, but that's okay. Uh, two subs are heading down this way to cover this uh, towards Darwin. These heavy cruisers are moving towards this area over here. Most likely I'll probably have these subs moving this way. Probably better to do that. We'll see what we have time-wise. Uh, but yes, the heavy cruisers are moving to this area over here. So one will move there, a second there, and a third there. The reason for that is I want to try and cover that line. Try and just, just stagger them a little bit. Just have them uh, somewhat separated in order to take advantage of this. He may have air power in Northern Australia, but I'm hoping it's not going to be... Well, Northern Australia, but I'm hoping it's not going to be anywhere near enough. We do have the Midikipatai, which is going to be headed south. And what I'm going to do then is they're heading this way, so they're going to be moving eight hexes. So they're likely to arrive here tomorrow, which is good. That provides a support in the area. It's going to be too distant from over here, but if he moves further down this way, perhaps. But I doubt he'll move this way. He's most likely to obviously move this way or even be forced to retreat. Uh, but ideally that puts us in a position where we are not detected. Unlikely, as he does have subs out here and he will have naval search. Uh, we will be attacking at Copang tomorrow. We are still unloading support here. But taking Copang would be a really nice one to have there. I did go ahead and actually move up the H6K4s over here to Kendara to actually give us additional naval search. So we do have uh, naval search of 20 out here now. Which doesn't look as far. <laughs> it's funny sometimes with geog uh, geography. But that gives us additional naval search. You can see it gives us important naval search down this way. And it just it just keeps us uh, gives us an eye out there. But what I would do is actually have the H6K4s uh, then transferred immediately to Copang or even potentially G4s, but likely H6K4s, which would give us then additional range out here. So you can see that we'd have range then out to 20. Uh, if we do take Denpasa in that time, we'd have range quite nicely out here, really, which is what we'd want then. But we'll see. It's going to be a few days before we take that. Two days if I actually want to push it to the max and uh, actually get there at full speed. Uh, but we'll see how things turn out. But this is going well. I'm awaiting additional reinforcements to actually arrive in the area. I do have two oilers I wish to actually get moving out into the Indian Ocean. I do have the 23rd Air Flotilla, which is heading for Copang right now. So they've got 13 hexes to go. They're going at 6 per day. Uh, so they'll have 7 left tomorrow, but I can actually move them at full speed and they would arrive at Copang in 2 days, which is something I'm very tempted to do. If we do take Copang, I will move them at full speed tomorrow and get them burnt to Copang which would be exceptionally useful, because what we'd be able to do then is actually get G4s operating out immediately. Whether or not we actually need to do that is another question, but it would be definitely worthwhile doing. And because we'd have the Air HQ over here, the Fifth Air Division at Kandari, uh, we'd have the Flotilla down here at Copang. So that would give us a real nice coverage here. Uh, but what I will be most likely doing then is uh, looking to shift air power up over here to Denpasa, uh, potentially to one of these other bases. 
Uh, we will have the 22nd headquarters, so the, the 22nd flotilla with the Palambang. Uh, the thing comes down to, will we need torpedo bombers in this area? Perhaps so. Uh, it's always useful to have, really, just to control the actual shipping lanes. There's still probably a lot of ships in port here. You can see that there's uh, a few over here. Uh, a few over here, but are but these are obviously smaller ones. Uh, but these smaller ones are still very useful taken out. Still very worthwhile taken out. And But I will have a heavy cruisers trying to intercept over this way. They're heading further south, not heading directly to the ships here, because we want to try and get, uh, get the, catch them down here. MKB then would go from this position to round right about that position, so that's 12. Uh, so we could assume that they would be here, then potentially the day after, then obviously something like that. Uh, but we'll see. What we're going to be aiming towards doing then is bringing them. Uh, so they're going to be about there tomorrow. Probably go something like that. We'll see. I do want to stay distant from Java, but I want to swing them north to try and catch as much as I possibly can. But that'll be intriguing, really. Now, let's see. I do have the subs over here. So, we... I Well, I expected them to move south, but they did not. But we luckily saw during the actual uh, replay that they were heading this way. So these subs are actually heading in different directions over here to the north. Uh, what I will be doing then is actually bringing the MKB up to try and chase what is ever lagging behind, really. I want to try and hit some more targets. Uh, to be honest, I think the Prince of Wales is in this area here. And it looked like it took them about four days, uh, I think about three days to head to Batavia. Uh, so what I'm hoping for then is we continue to actually chase them with submarines we might be able to get MKB to catch up. And what I might be able to do, if I can actually bring enough uh, oil out this way, is potentially look towards moving full speed. We'll see about that. Uh, what I'm hoping to be able to do here, then, is capture Palambang tomorrow, which is pretty much a uh, assured thing. I went through the actual units over here, the actual naval guard units, SLF. Um, oh, uh, this is not the actual final save. I didn't save the final save, uh, but I went through and actually increased the uh, ability of the commanders there and actually replaced the commanders with better ones. What I'm hoping to do is actually have these oilers refuel tomorrow, and what I could potentially do then is have them escorted through the strengths over here, and that could provide a second source of fuel for the Kidabatai, well, for the mini Kidabatai, which would be intriguing. I am moving support ships. Yeah, uh, there we go. So I'm moving support ships. Uh, let's see... There we go, so Chogai, Chogai, uh, Chugai, Chogi, Chogai, Chogai, <laughs> Chogai, <laughs> pronunciation's terrible. Yeah, moving to support ships there. I think I would be considering actually moving them to Coco's Island. That would be great if I could take Coco's Island, uh, which could be done obviously by potentially getting some uh, assault vehicle in there. I could just fan trans uh, fast transport a single squad there and take that island. But if I could get those ASs there, that'd be great. Well, AS and AV. Uh, to Coco's Island, that'd be great. I could actually transfer the Hates k 4s out there then, and that'd be really nice for us. I think future plans are going to be rather intriguing. Let's see. Yes, it's it's going to be a very interesting one to see what we can actually do against the Royal Navy over here. They do have strength, but they're not that strong because they don't have a large carrier force. And the Americans don't right now, but at least they still have, uh, I think it's three in total. But the British have, I think it's just the one right now. He will be receiving another carrier shortly, I'd imagine. Uh, but we do have delayed reinforcement on, so uh, things can arrive, well, they're reinforcement, so uh, things can arrive either 15 days earlier um, or they can arrive 15 days later and anything in between that sort of fif minus 15 plus 15 could be like minus 14 uh, minus uh, 2 or plus 1 or you know what I mean uh, so that does actually add a level of uncertainty uncertainty, uncertainty that we're not aware of can't speak today <laughs> I am taking the second no the third air division actually that is being railed out to Bangkok it's going to be loaded tomorrow so on the 20th, it'll be moving towards Bangkok. Take a, a few days to arrive at Bangkok. So that's going to be great. So what that means is uh, once the battle for Malay is essentially over, uh, I will be moving forces towards the north and actually starting the battle for Rangoon, essentially. We do have the Royal Thai Army moving in towards uh, Bolmain right now, uh, with additional forces behind them. I am considering bringing a 21st, well, bringing the 21st Division over here to Bangkok, but what I've actually been thinking about is, because they're right here now, it's going to take them a long time to arrive, 
They're moving four hexes per day, and they've got four to nine hexes to cover. What I might want to do is instead actually have the 21st Division actually dispatch to Luzon, uh, which would bring our strength up to three... Well, there's a 2nd Division coming in. Well, the 2nd Division coming in. Uh, not tomorrow, but the day after. I do have a division here, a brigade. Uh, so that would give us 2 divisions, that would give us 3 divisions. Another consideration is to potentially bring the 38th Division to lose on as well, which would bring us up to 4 divisions and a brigade. I'm considering it, uh, but I think I need to see how Singapore's going to go, actually. Or potentially elsewhere. We'll see. We need to see what sort of resistance he can put up in Burma. It would be nice to have a division made available for that, but we'll see. Another thing to take into consideration as well is uh, perhaps bringing, obviously continue to bring the 38th to this area, uh, but perhaps bringing the 38th to the area to secure a beach head in Java. Uh, we will have another division able to be assembled over here to Kandari shortly. I do need forces to actually hold Kandari itself. Uh, what I might look towards doing then is actually sending a force out just to destroy these units over here in these bases and just, just make this area secure. Uh, that's something to bear in mind. I do have a couple of regiments to do that with, but I'd like to form the actual division and have it just, just divided into three, really. The important thing is to have air, well, to have aerial dominance here, uh, but just keep up the tempo, really. The longer I keep up the tempo, the better, because I can try to keep him on the back foot as much as possible. I want to try to avoid him actually being able to consolidate. Uh, that it's it is almost impossible to do, really. It is almost impossible to stop him from consolidating ultimately, uh, because he has the benefit of interior lines, really. So it is difficult. It is very difficult, but we will manage. We will succeed. Uh, we do have plenty of supply coming in, which is good. We do have additional assets coming in. Uh, we just need to... I mean, this is what you learn. You just need to have a almost constant... So, well, inflow coming in here, really. You've got to have the actual men to be able to keep up the um, the battle, really. And the thing is, these guys will become more and more tired. In fact, I can look over here. 19 and 16, but they did win the day. Uh, Copan could be a little bit harder there to win, but I'm hoping that they will manage it. They do have supply to unload during the night. They do actually have a little bit more of a bombardment force there. I mean, it's two APDs and two DMSs. Yeah, DMSs are spending their munitions. But it's still a little bit better than uh, nothing. And eh, they still have these 12 centimeter guns. I mean, there is more ships over here as well, so at least they do benefit from that. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. The MKB is moving south, and they are bringing battleships. So if needs be, I could lend battleship support. Uh, I'd rather not. I'd rather not. I'm hoping that we will be able to manage to take this. I just need the base. I can finish up the island to more than afterwards. Uh, but it's the base that matters right now. Uh, I did decide to go ahead and leave the third battleship group behind. So, uh, Nagato, uh, Nagato and uh, Issei will remain a Kandara to rearm. What I'm going to do then is actually have them bombard Ambon during the day. Make sure we actually neutralize that airfield. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be quite good. I'm likely to actually leave the battleships in this area because they are quite... They're fuel hungry. Uh, we could potentially then have them made available to move up the Java Sea to help us actually secure a position. It wouldn't be a bad idea to actually have them on standby to potentially bombard the living hell out of a position around here, really. That's something to bear in mind. Uh, let's see... Yes. Yeah, it would be good to actually try to diminish Dutch forces and try and cause them a lot of disruption for tea, but we'll see. Uh, the invasion of Java is going to come either December or January. I'm hoping that I can finish it in January, but we'll see. We do have the benefit of major roads, which is nice. So it shouldn't be too long. I do also have rail lines as well, which is great, but he also does have rail lines as well. Uh, so what we'll have to do then is look to consolidate, well look to secure one part of the island first and take it from there. That mountain hex is going to be a problem. It is a problem. It'd be one of those where we'd probably have to starve it to be honest, but we'll see. One of the mountain hex over here. Yeah, uh, I think essentially what we'd have to do then is cut the island in half perhaps. It is tempting to consider, uh, I mean, some, uh, sorry, 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 Baya, uh, sorry, Baya is heavily mined, so that's something to bear in mind. Uh, but there are ports around here. I could potentially look to land at Samarang. I mean, that's a very nice port there. It is clear to rain, which is great. I imagine that's also mined, so we do have to be quite careful what we do choose. So it might be that we go for the smaller ports. I mean, that one's really good. A nice one air base there is amazing. 
Um, but yeah, we'll have to bring plenty, plenty of power for that. Make sure we have plenty of cover. So Banjurge, Banjur Massin is going to be required as well. That would be great there to have a support and airfield. Uh, but if we could have Osthaven, Osthaven, well, Osthaven, uh, then Parsa, and then Benjamin, that'd be great. That gives a nice amount of cover here. If we could actually bypass Java and take potential control of uh, Christmas Island IO and Cocos Island as well, uh, that would actually help us to hem in Java. But yeah, I'd imagine battleships are going to be required. Most definitely. This is the issue. I can't bombard that. This mountain hex isn't so bad because I can actually bombard it. At least I should be able to bombard it from the coast, which is great. Uh, yeah, uh, most of the bases in Java can be bombarded if needs be, so that's very handy. Having six battleships able to do that is very nice, and additional heavy cruisers. Um, what I'm going to be doing then is going to take some time for Congo and Haruna to actually arrive at uh, Hong Kong. Uh, Sendai is going to be left there to repair. Now, well, then again, I'm probably going to have Sendai's remaining in port, but not actually under repairs. I'm going to concentrate efforts on Congo. I do have the actual naval headquarters that needs to get there too. But it's a large port, and just with one one ship in there, they should be able to get it done fast. But I imagine Congo will take, uh, I'd imagine about a month of repair, really. What I am considering doing then is actually having uh, possibly Congo Haruna, or potentially just Haruna. Maybe the first time with Congo, but we'll see. We'll see. It is a risky proposition. I would have to flood this area with patrol boats and subchasers. Obviously have ASW patrols around this area. Uh, but what I would like to do is actually bombard one cow to actually open up the offensive there. Uh, a couple daylight bombardments would be really nice just to help just neutralize his forces. The good news is, and this is where things really do work out for us, it's not going to be long. Let's see, show ships under repair, auxiliary. There we go. Yeah, it's going to be 10 days or so before AKEs arrive, which is brilliant. What that means is I could actually have uh, AKEs moved over here to Taihoku or elsewhere, potentially even here to Fuchao or even Ningpo, whichever one is closest. And that would give us the ability, I'd probably be looking towards Taihoku as a source of fuel there, this fuel on the island of Formosa, or even potentially here to Fuchao. Uh, but essentially what we'd be looking towards doing then is having AKs very close by so these guys can rearm quickly and efficiently, be refueled as well, and just, just go in there to Wenkau and bombard it every single day. Um, so we'll see about that. I mean that's kind of when I'm leaning towards it, but we'll see. In China, I haven't really decided on a strategy per se yet. Uh, in general, I'm going to have the Kwantung Army, which has just arrived up here. They're going to be waiting two days to unload and just, just be ready, really. And then I'm going to march here. What I want to try and do is actually co coordinate the timing of things, so I could try and have the support for Wang Kao. Well, we'll see. There's no great rush in China, uh, but obviously the longer we wait, the more well, stronger it becomes, really. Over here at Shanghai. Well, sorry, not Shanghai, from Hangzhou. I do have four divisions and a headquarters. I'm moving another unit here just to garrison this uh, city. Uh, but what I'm going to do is march down here, march down here, then march uh, four divisions to Bancao. That probably wouldn't be enough if he's actually got additional forces in there. So I am going to need to have uh, ship support, naval support there to take Bancao. That would be really, really important. Uh, it's a difficult one, and I do want to take Bancao because I do not want it to become a a roadblock, or a fort on my side, but we'll see. I think with sufficient naval support we'd be able to manage it. Uh, we used heavy cruisers before, but I think um, I think battleship support would be nice. I am going to have a lot of surface assets freed up as well from a conquest of the Dutch East Indies, so I could potentially bring more assets here to bombard if necessary. It may seem like a silly thing to do, but it's just, it is a source of pain. It's not a problem per se, but it's one of those of I'd like to I'd like to lance the problem quickly. Over here in central China, however, I'm sending, I believe it's four divisions, it's either three or four divisions. There's another division that has arrived over here. So what I'm going to do then is have them actually uh, consolidate in this position, well, congregate in this position. What I would like to do is take control of these major roads. So there is a uh, few ways I could do this. I'm going to have to march this way. I want to try and control the approaches towards Changsha. Uh, but what I would like to do is march this way and control these major roads here. Uh, potentially move divisions down this way as well. But I want to be in possession of these major roads here. 
I want to make things difficult for him, but uh, most importantly, I want to have control of the roads here. I want to have control of those roads, those major roads that are very important in China, and make sure I'm the one controlling that. So what the plan would be really then is, longer term, is take control of Qingchao, uh, Luoyang, and then potentially march on towards Nanyang as this is clear terrain over here. Assuming we have a victory, uh, it depends on what cost, but looking towards then consolidating in southern China and bringing up additional forces this way. Most likely it will not happen like this. We'll see, we'll see. I still have the time to obviously call this off. It's one of these of, is it worthwhile? And it probably isn't, really. What it might be worthwhile doing then is actually looking to secure this road over here, perhaps. And then just looking towards uh, moving down the roads and taking control of this settlement and then this settlement, perhaps. And just looking towards forming like a barrier around southern China and then just dealing with it over time. And Wen Kao is one of those where it's not going anywhere, so I could just, I could just dedicate um, a certain amount of naval bombardment each and every day until it's just at a point where the defenders are kind of trashed. Not that it would fall easily, as we know, but we'll see. Yeah, China's one of those where uh, there's a lot of things that you might want to do, but you're not going to get them done immediately. I did actually buy out a hell of a lot more engineers as well over here. So you can see I'm loading up, uh, let's see, 48, 47, 46, 31st, 36, 35th, 34, 49, 46, 45th. Uh, third there. Uh, yes, I'm loading up plenty of construction units over here. Additional construction units over here as well. Uh, the second air division is going to be leaving tomorrow as well. But yes, uh, those air units, the, the air division and the construction units are really destined over here for lay. Now, I'm going to take the 66th, 66th Brigade and take lay, and then take the bases in this area. The reason why all, a lot, a, a vast majority of our construction units are moving down to this area is I want to essentially turn Lei into a real nice solid place of resistance, but it would give us a nice springboard then to work on Port Moresby if we had a adequate number of airfields over here that were strong and obviously a good amount of infrastructure to work with, then we'll be moving on Port Moresby. Now, a probable thing as well is um, whether I'd even bring battleships to this area or whether I'd have the battleships actually rotate out towards the Bismarck Sea and to the Solomon Sea and then into the bombardment of Port Moresby. Uh, that one would be interesting. The thing about that is I would have to obviously cover it with carrier support or have strong air support in the area. Now the air support can be done because I can bring a number of air uh, units such as, well especially level bombers, I can, bring, I can bring the naval bombers, sorry. If the issue comes down to fighters, I'd need to have a good concentration of fighters, but we'll see. Things are moving quickly and um, he's a, he is a good fine opponent and he is He's not apt. He's played this game so many times. He's gonna have something. He knows what he can stand and he knows how to punish us. If we give him any any ability to do so and yeah, he'll he'll do it. He will take that. Uh, some of these invasions have been a little bit um, risky, but we have been looking at the fact that they have worked out, so we're gonna have to continue with that look, ideally. Okay. Yeah, what I decided to do here is actually consolidate. I did consider actually potentially having those heavy cruisers escort, well, take a force down there to Bellop. Uh, but I thought not yet, not until we secure these areas first. We've got to remember that a carrier could be on its way at any time, and probably is. Uh, Tarawai just unloaded a engineer unit over here. So what I'm going to be looking towards doing then is actually, and I should have done this, but what I could do then... Ah, so I need to construct an airfield here. Okay. Right, there's not much in the way of supplies. It looks like it looks like it's just going to be a float plane base. I need to get some supply in there. Uh, but yes, I'm going to be running float planes from Talawa. I could do that. Um, potentially take them from Dutch East Indies. Maybe out this way. Could be worthwhile. We'll have to figure out where they'll come from. Uh, we are looking towards hitting Wake again. So we'll have the second invasion of Wake. I do have these forces over here for the, uh, it's called the Tower Invasion, obviously it's the, um, Wake Invasion. It's not the greatest amount of men, it's only 2400 men in total. It's not, um, it's not full units, I mean the 51st isn't in full strength, I think. Um, but we do have the 51st and the 53rd, it should be enough. I do have these, uh, heavy cruisers moving into Bombard. What I'll have to do then is obviously have them rearmed, uh, which is why the AKEs are going to be so good. 
Now, the Kadibatai was not spotted during the night, which is good, but what I'm doing is actually having them head out to Tawangi. Um, I've taken one of the actual Zero Squadrons and set it to long range cap over the Invasion Force 116, which is good. These guys could then be retired to go rearm at Truck, which is not too distant out, but obviously I do want to have that support available. But yes, if needs be, I could bring the Hiei and Kirishima into bombard at Wake Island, but we'll see. But essentially, we want to make sure that uh, we take the island. If I make the Kidabatai known, he isn't as likely to respond to that. We haven't seen the submarine net disturbed, which is good, but I'm going to have to uh, spread that out. Uh, we do have these. I think I actually forgot about these guys, but that's fine. We'll probably pick up on them again. We know where they are, roughly, so obviously I'll just pick up on them. Uh, you're moving there, you're moving there. I do have additional subs moving to the north. Uh, we're likely to pick up on them anyway. I do want to get some hits there. It's probably actually doing this to test out where our uh, submarines are for the most part. Potentially. Uh, I do have another engineer unit moving it to Tulagi, so we'll have... Well, we've got one already, which is good. I've got a lot of AV here already. What I'm looking towards doing then is actually building Tulagi up. And what I could do is actually have an air HQ established here, perhaps, and build up these other dot bases in the area. Like, this one could be a size 3, that one could be nothing. Uh, that one here, can't even bloody see it. Lunga could be a size 5. Over here, a Ku, Oki. Uh, it could be a 3. That could be a 4. That could be a 5. So you can see here, then, if I had an air HQ... A lot of these dot bases become very, very usable. Very usable. Which is really nice. So what I'll do is look to build this up. That would be very nice. It would give us a real strong position out here on the Coral Sea, which is going to be required. I would then be looking towards moving into this area, but we need to make sure we have a strong position to actually move out from. So, build up the lay area. Build up the Solomon uh, Island area, so the Guadalcanal area. Uh, yes, uh, Guadalcanal area. Build that up solidly and go for that. Um, we are attacking the Rabal. I'm hoping that two SLF units will be enough. Could be wrong, but I'm... I am hoping. If needs be, we can bring reinforcements, but I'd rather not have to. I did we take that. I did we take Copang tomorrow. Palembang should fall, as we do have enough forces here. It's a good, uh, good chunk of AB, then. 178 in total. Good chunk. I mean, 174 will be attacking. But yes, good chunk. I uh, had realized I was actually making a mistake here. Um, I had them set to head towards Temela, but I forgot, obviously, when there's a unit in the way, they'll try to head around that unit. Uh, so now they're set there. They'd only made 8 miles progress, but uh, they should make 15 tomorrow on those secondary roads there. Shouldn't take them long to catch up, and they'll, they'll get there. It's two days uh, delayed, but uh, that's fine. That's fine. There's no uh, great rush in central Malaya, so we'll see you there. Okay. I'm still running G3s over here. I'd like to run G3s from other bases as well, so actually gives that additional naval search, but we'll see. But the good news is, once Wake falls, what I'll probably do then is... I think I probably will use Marcus uh, Island as some sort of an airfield as well for H6K4s. Run them from uh, Marcus Island. It means I could actually take H6K4s from Saipan and actually move them to Wake instead. Uh, potentially. And just uh, just look towards covering the area. So, like, Tanawa, Malawap, Wake Island, Marcus Island, then obviously Japan, Panamashima, and Jima. Um... H6K is out this way in the Coral Sea. Just looking to push the search envelope as far out as possible, really. That's what we need to do. Try and be aware of threats coming in. But yeah, things are going well. Things are going well. It's uh, it's a case of just really keeping the momentum up. Trying to make good on these conquests in the early days. Uh, make sure we're consolidated, but then make sure we are on top of things, really. And keep the successes coming in, really. The Allies won't really feel this. It's going to hurt them, it's going to sting, but it, it isn't going to make a difference in the end. They will have overwhelming power that could easily destroy us, and we're very likely to lose this campaign. Very, very, very likely to lose this campaign. Uh, but this is it. The stronger start we have, and the less mistakes we make, the better. So let's hope for the best. Ultimately, we're going to need luck. We're going to need luck. Hopefully we get that. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you have, please do consider subscribing as well. That is awesome. I'm going to uh, read out my patrons as well. My lovely, lovely patrons who helped to make this all possible. So great.
absolutely each and every one of them. So a big thank you to Mr. Baines, Bleach Acid, Deepik Duck, Dingo Batfall, Eric Wild, Eric Justo, George Kilgore, Gregory Van Housen, Icy Crow, Imperator Fraun, James Lindsay, Lock Luba, sorry, Lord Luba, not Lock Luba, Lord Luba, Mark Tolson, Paul Sanders, Raphael, Rick Chambers, Ricky Blinson, Sam, Spatch, Sun Yan, my good friend there, all of them, of course, Talon, 1DE, The Forgotten, Thunder, who is my latest patron. Thank you so very much, man, mate. Much appreciated. It really, really does help. And Tindlim Home. Thank you also very much. If you guys do feel I've actually earned your support, I do. I want to earn your support. I do want to earn your support. I don't want you to. Uh, I, I, I hate begging. I do beg. <laughs> it's essentially you begging. But I'd like to think that I've actually earned it. I'd like to think that all the hours of entertainment provided is actually worth it. So, thank you so very much. If you guys do feel I've earned it, then please do consider becoming a patron. That would be much appreciated. Until next time, thank you and goodbye. I assume in Asai. Goodbye for now.